Hello everyone, this is Brendan. Um, I thought I would do something a little bit different for once. So I am a bit of a Magic the Gathering and Commander fan in particular. And um, as you can see here, these are a lot of decks that I have built. Um, if you're not familiar with this site, this is deckstats.net. Um, it's a great site. Um, it has a deck builder feature and what you can do is you can go in there um, and you can type, you can either search for cards by their name or you can go, okay, I want to see all the stuff that has trample and it'll show you everything that has trample. You can filter it by specific colors. There are more filters if you want to search by only specific legality if you're in a particular format or if you only want them to be enchantment type or if you want them to be a specific colors so I want exactly white and green or contain at least one of those or only contain those if you want a specific CMC if you want a particular rarity or even a particular set if you're working with that some really helpful tools to build a deck that I have used quite a lot of um, and there's also a handy um, collection tool over here that I've started slowly to add um, to start catalog um, my collection of cards um, which you can see bits of here um, though I've still got a long way to go <laughs> as you can see a thousand cards and I've still got a long way to go most of my decks are not in there so I wanted to show off um, one deck for now um, as you can see I've got so each one of these is a commander deck I think I have maybe one one or two there we go one or two two um, decks that are not commander decks now some of these um, I made originally made when I was quite early on in in figuring out commander and some of these are a lot more recent and the more recent ones are a lot I guess a lot more tuned, a lot more, I've put a lot more thought into them and they're perhaps a bit more competitive, but at the same time, you know, I don't have a lot of money to be spending on commander cards. And so that means um, that most of these decks are just, you know, here at the moment. You know, I haven't got the money to buy them. Um, so at the moment I have four decks that I have built that I have actually Bought, which is the Aussie Creatures deck, the Bigger is Better Ajani deck, the Tanya Sack Lands deck, and oh, what's the fourth one? The Rashmi for Free deck. Um, but even with those ones, um, like two or three of them, I've done updates to that I haven't been up by yet. Um, this again, money. Um, and one of the things about the command format is that um, you obviously you're using a hundred different cards except for basic lands and so it's both the sense that you have a much bigger deck and also a much more varied deck means that it can often get quite expensive and it's quite easy to have decks that are $100, $200 each. Um, so um, what I decided to do recently was I decided to make a cheap deck. So I'm going to show you, this is the deck that I'm going to show you. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a deck where all of the cards were, you know, no more expensive than $2 um, and most less than $1. Um, and so first thing I, I did was try to find a commander that was less than two dollars and I found this one Veil of the Nightclad so it's four colorless a blue and a black so it's a blue black deck which is not really the colors that I usually play with I tend to go with green and a bit of white um, but I've, I've played I ran with a little bit of blue before but I haven't touched black yet so this was interesting um, legendary creature human wizard Intimidate, which is a bit of an old word these days, Doesn't, don't see it that much more anymore. Um, but it means that it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures 
or creatures that share a color with it. So it can only be blocked by either colorless artifact creatures, colorless creatures, um, sorry, I shouldn't confuse the two, artifact creatures, or creatures that share a color with it. So creatures that have either blue or black or both in them. It also says that other creatures you control also have Intimidate. So that means that a lot of my stuff won't be getting blocked. But the reason that I chose it is for this little line of text here. Whenever Veil of the Nightclad or another you creature you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. And I saw that and I immediately went, I can combo this off to do an insta kill with everyone on the board and I wanted to figure out if I could do that in a budget deck and so that's what I tried to do. So this is the deck list that we have here. I'll go into details so you can see it a bit better. So the most expensive card is a 7 mana card which isn't too bad. Um, we have a lot of CC0 and CC1 cards if I go here, you can see the distribution. We have 38 lands. Um, ah, other handy tool with the um, collection is when you build a deck, it shows you which ones you already have. So I go, oh, I don't have to buy these ones. Um, it automatically ticks basic lands for you. Um, so I go, oh, I don't need to buy that one. Oh, I don't need to buy that one. Oh, don't need to buy that one. Um, though, again, those could be in my collection because they're already in, in another deck that I have, so I need to check that. But So we have 38 lands. A lot of these, are, so we've got 11 islands, 15 swamps. A lot of lands that are just blue-black lands. So we have Choked Estuary. Hang on, what I'll do is I'll change it to Visual Spoiler. This will probably take a while to load up. Command Tower, of course, pretty standard in Commander. Um, check history, blue black land, another blue black land, another blue black land, blue black land. Um, Inventor's Fair um, is one of the combo pieces. Um, oh no, hang on, not combo pieces. This is the problem. No, fetch pieces, sorry, this is the problem. I have comments on all of these. This is one of the, the things that I find really helpful with deck stats is I can put comments on each of the different things and I use that quite extensively. I haven't um, done that on some of my more recent ones. I haven't gone in and gone through and done all that yet, but I find that really, really helpful. Um, but yeah, this is one of the things that I use to fetch out artifacts, um, um, which is one of the three combo pieces. So again, blue, black land, blue, black land, um, blue black land, blue black land, um, just extra mana, and then again, any any mana. Okay, now let's go back here. So M M is mana, F is fetch. Um, and then oh, so. So this this is the combo. Okay, so so the first thing to do is to play Tidewater Minion. Okay, so Tidewater Minion is three blue blue, a defender. So it means it can't attack. It's an elemental minion, four four. But you pay for it. It loses defender until end of turn, or you can tap it to untap target permanent. Okay, and that's that's kind of the important part. Step two, play and equip Illusionist Braces to Tidewater Minion. That says, whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. And you may choose new targets for that copy. So when we equip that to Tidewater Minion, that means that when we tap it to untap target permanent, we instead get to untap two target permanents. Okay, so at the moment we're able to tap Tidewater Minion and then untap two target permanents. Step three, we play Mere Turbine 
which is tap, put a 1-1 one, one colorless me artifact creature token on the battlefield, or tap and tap 5 untap me you control, search your library for a mere creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Step 4, generate an infinite or arbitrarily large number of tokens. Now the way you do this is to tap, um, so you tap Mia Turbo, create a creature token, then you tap Tidewater Minion with Illusionist Braces, you target Mia Turbine and Tidewater Minion, so both Mia Turbine and Tidewater Minion are tapped. Then you can tap Mia Turbine again, create another artifact, create another Mia artifact creature token, and you can do this as many times as you would like. And then what you do, step 5, play any of the mass removal or max exile cards in the deck and each opponent loses all their life because the trigger whenever Veil vale of the Nightclad or another creature you control leaves the battlefield each opponent loses one life. So if you have 40 creatures that leave the battlefield all at once then all opponents lose 40 life and die. And each of the TV uh, ones that say TV is Trigger Veiler. So each of those are Mass Removal Max Exile cards that will trigger this. So one for example is Aligned Hedron Network which says when it enters the battlefield exile all creatures with power 5 or greater until Aligned Hedron Network leaves the battlefield. The Actually no that doesn't really help. Um, I'm not sure why I have that one in there. Never mind. Okay, Biden of Zaza is just a good card. Because um, I've got ones that have Intimidate, which means they're not going to get blocked as much, so I can attack with creatures, and then they won't get blocked. I can draw cards. It's helpful. Vile of Light. Target creature and all other creatures with the same name as that creature get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Mere Turbine is making 1-1 one, one Mere Artifact Creature Tokens. They all have the same name, so they all die to this, which is awesome. Biting Rain, all creatures get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Again, that's going to kill it. Brain Spoil, fetch part 1 and part 3. I use, I use the Transmute for this. So discard this card, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it and put it into your hand. So that gets me either Tidewater Million or Mere Tur- No? Sorry? Yeah, either Tidewater Million or Mere Turbine, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Because the converted mana cost for this card is 5, so I can discard this, pay 3, and get either of those. Cancel Cow Spell. If I need anything like that. Again, I can use this to fetch any of the three cards. Day of the Dragons, exile all creatures you control, then create that many 5-5 red dragon creature tokens with flying. No. So I kill everyone and then create lots of dragon creature tokens, because why the heck not? Uh, more fetches, another counter spell, R is ramp, a removal, um, again minus two, minus two until end of turn. All other creatures with the same name, minus two, minus two until end of turn. Return all creatures to their owner's hands. Again, same thing, still works. Um, all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Again, um, and exiling them. Uh, again, fetch. First, I believe that's minus, yeah, minus two, minus two. More fetch, more fetch. So, Yep, yeah, this is this is the general idea of the deck that um, you know you're you're playing this creature, you're getting um, illusionist braces equipped to it, then you're playing Mere Turbine, you're creating infinite number of creatures, and then yeah, that's how and then getting rid of all your creatures and it works. It's pretty cool and. If for some reason the combo doesn't work, then we have a bunch of just cheap creatures that we can play 
um, which because they have Intimidate it means that they can get through quite easily um, if we don't have that um, uh, token generation happening um, to start some, some early game triggers happening so that we can start chipping away at their life so just some one mana creatures that we can play on the first few turns to get those life totals coming down um, which is really handy um, oh yes I have a couple with Ninjutsu which is just fun um, yes. and, and another way to trigger Vela as well because you've got one that's leaving the battlefield um, but you're swapping one out for it as well which is cool um, so yeah more Ninjutsu dudes um, yeah that is um, how this one works so I hope you've found that interesting um, and again you know this you know this this plays well in the sense that I go you know I can get this whole deck for about 50 bucks you know that's the total cost um, though keeping in mind that this will change depending on where you buy your cards from um, and I have to often factor in things like shipping and I'm generally buying cards online from America so I have to factor in the um, conversion from American dollars to Australian dollars which is annoying but there's not a lot that I can do about that unfortunately um, so yeah that is that deck I hope you enjoyed having a look at that um, next time I might show off um, one of my other decks that I've played around with so I'll so I mean this one's fairly obvious give everything infect death touch and trample and swing um, this one I was given a while ago by the friend of mine that introduced me to Commander, he gave me um, a horde of notions. Um, it's a five color legendary elemental creature because my first deck was an elemental commander. Um, and so I like elementals. Um, so I was like, oh, I can finally build a uh, game around that. Thing around that. Um, I created a group hug deck. Um, I created. I, I really like um, the, all the alternate win conditions um, that there are. There are so many alternate win cons. I want to create like a deck that just has alternate win cons. But there was one that, that really interested me, um, which was Maze's End, which says, you know, search your library. Um, if you control 10 or more gates with different names, you win the game. So I built a deck around that. As you do, um, there are only 10 different gates that have been printed. So it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, oh, and I tried to find a deck that would work well with zero cost cards. I've done a uh, commander with unstable hydras. Um, yeah, lots, lots of different... Um, different decks that I've played around with, lots of different colour combinations. Eventually I want to have one of pretty much every colour combination out there, but we'll see how we go. But that is plenty for now, and I'll see you next time.